as always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the weekend? Well, this is an interesting one. I went with Tom Brady. Now, originally, my loser of the week were going to be people that thought that the video was real. <laughs> it's a cool video, man. It's a great video, and they did a great job making it look real. But uh, people have to understand. I guess maybe no one knows how a jugs machine works uh, to know that that, like, is just not going to happen. But I went ahead and made Tom the winner with that video and everyone he's, you know, good enough to where people actually think that it's real. Uh, and I'm talking people that like, that know the sport that cover the sport that have to, you would think would realize it, but that and his, uh, his picture showing off all the rings, man, Tom Brady is, uh, he's living life right now. So if you haven't seen the video, basically it's Tom Brady throwing a ball into a jugs machine, which is a jugs machine is something that shoots out footballs at a high rate of speed. And you can use it for wide receivers. You can, you can change the angle on it. You can use it for punt returns, kick returns. There's fancy ones that can make it go end over end. There's all kinds of things now, but it, it is, it is an essential piece of football equipment. And it's basically Tom Brady throwing balls from different distances into the jugs machine to where the jugs machine stalls and then shoots it back out at him and he catches it. Which now you would have to throw a ball like 200 miles an hour to force it through the tires of a jugs machine. And it would have to hit absolutely perfect where it hit both tires at the exact same time. And then I don't even think it would work but everyone still believes it. <laughs> Do you be, well, it's Tom Brady and whoever right. runs his social media stuff. I don't know if like he has approval, like they have to run what they post from the accounts past him first, or I, I'm sure there's something in place there, but they do a hell of a job. He's got like the best social media team good. in the game. Like he's really fantastic, good. but I had two thoughts on the judge machine thing. And my first thought was, my God, his hair looks good in this video. <laughs> I mean, his hair, it's just like, it's just, it just keeps getting, it just keeps getting better with age. It's ridiculous. I will, I will uh, reluctantly admit that whenever I saw the video, I was like, okay, Tom, you got dressed up for this one, huh? You he look you good. Looking pretty sharp. He looked good. And then my second thought was, man, physics nerds, are going to be furious with this video. <laughs> I mean, absolutely furious. And I love how it, it is funny that some people, like, they don't realize that all this stuff in movies is like CGI. Like, you can destroy a city, like, on a computer and do it all yourself. And they're like, no, man, that jug machine, that's not fake. That's real. It's like, they can do anything, bro. They can make look make anything look real now. And the other thing is the way a jugs machine is set up, the way it sets on the ground, and I'll have to go back and look at that one, but they usually have three legs and it's like a tripod. You have to hit that thing with a car to knock it over. A football is not going to knock it over going backwards, but I don't know. I'd still, it looks great. They did a great job with it. I was just annoyed at some of the people that I saw like, this is the most impressive thing I've ever seen. It's meanwhile, crazy. meanwhile, the scientist nerds are like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Who do you have as your loser of the weekend? Well, I thought about going with green Bay again, uh, after contract extension negotiations with, uh, Devonte Adams have stalled and Aaron Rodgers, uh, agent is hinting at him retiring, but, I thought I would give the Packers fans a bit of a break. And I ended up going with the Texas legislator on this deal. In a pathetic bid to try and stop OU Texas to the SEC, you know, you've got one half of the Texas legislator who is in Washington, D.C. right now asking for care packages. And the other half is in Texas passing worthless legislation that has nothing to do, will not stop, can't stop, is just a worthless waste of everyone's time 
trying to pass a law keeping them in the Big 12 and out of the SEC. Totally ridiculous, especially whenever this move for Texas is going to create a massive amount of money for the state of Texas. It's going to be great. The fan base is coming in. The the, the tickets they, they're going to sell, the amount of money that they're going to be able to make and then spend on their own program. It's a great thing for uh, the state of Texas. And those uh, those A&M fans and Baylor fans and Tech fans that happen to be representatives right now not having it. Do you think, and it's not all politicians, it, it, it's not all, but do you think, they realize like when they ran for office and but especially a bunch of people in the state of Texas ran on, you know, a pro capitalism platform. And they said things in campaign speeches about open markets and how important it is to them. And then they tried to do the exact opposite. Do you think it like dawns on them at any point? They're like, wait, I said the exact opposite. And now, do you think that's something that even crosses politicians' minds when they do it? Or is it just, or are they just more like actors at this point where you give them a well, script and you, then I, I will never be a politician. So I, I think it's really hard. It, it doesn't seem like a fun job that they're I not even actors. Uh, all that they are, they respond to polling. I, every politician has changed their mind on every topic about 50 million times. I mean, it's not very difficult to look at, uh, you know, either one person or one group and see what their current topic is today that they're hammering home and go back and check six months ago, see that they happen to be saying the exact opposite. So yeah, it capitalism ends where my football team begins. Okay. That's (laughs) You should put that on a t-shirt, <laughs> but it's, I, I wish the politicians would just come out and be honest, be like, no, 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 no. I don't want them to leave. That would suck. I went to Baylor and that would suck for Baylor. Like just come out and you don't have to put all the political bumbo jumbo in the statements and all that. Just, just be real about it. And I think people would be like, you know what? That does kind of suck for you. You're right. Okay. But it's, yep. they're not going to stop it. Come on. No, not going to stop it. Um, it's it's if if the SEC wants it to happen and OU and Texas want it to happen, it's going to happen. Right. Okay. For my winner of the weekend, thought about going with Bill Snyder because I I, I thought this was kind of cool. He put a tweet out saying, "Quote: The Big Twelve came through this before and will again. Keep the faith. Bob Bowlesby and school presidents are good leaders. Negative talk won't help." which he, he's a K-State legend. He's a legend of college football. It's a great message, but Ted, I almost made him my winner of the weekend because how about Bill Snyder tweeting? Like it was just the way it was structured, like and how some things weren't. Like, I was like, there was zero doubt in my mind that that 81-year-old man was typing that out on his own phone or on his own computer. And like he hit send on that himself. And I was like, look at you go, Bill 81 and tech, not just technologically savvy. He probably thought, well, hell I can get a message to that many people that easily. I shouldn't have wasted all that time with all those handwritten letters uh, throughout the years. <laughs> no, I think those were great, and I'm shocked it wasn't just a picture of a handwritten letter. Uh, that would have been exactly that, that. would have been even better. <laughs> but that is good, man. Uh, now he's wrong, but I I like the message, positivity. Big Twelve is going to move through it. Good stuff. But my winner of the weekend, Mike Shashevsky. Coach K, I mean, USA basketball sucks without him, apparently. I mean, they just they just can't win games without Mike Krzyzewski on the sideline, apparently. USA basketball loses to France, to Rudy <laughs> Gobert and the oh. French. They lost to France, who has a couple of solid players. Don't get me wrong, but... There's not a ton of talent. They're not even, I don't even think they're one of the top three most talented teams at the Olympics. And now I'll just say, I I thought Drew Holiday, especially 
him coming straight from the parade, essentially. I thought he played well. Uh, I was impressed with the way that he played, especially in the second half of that game. But Damian Lillard was bad. Durant, by his standards, was awful. I mean, that's one of the worst games he's played for USA Basketball. I, I'm confused when I was watching. I was a little confused as to what Greg Popovich is trying to get them to do offensively. The spacing is all weird. I, I, but no one apparently on Team USA can stop Evan Fournier, who ends up pouring in 28 points for the French. And I'm just sitting there going, they're going to lose to France. And they had a lead. But they just, I mean, Fournier hit some big shots late in the game, but the the French team thoroughly outplayed the American squad in the last couple of minutes of the game, right? I think they had like an eight-point lead with three or four minutes to go, and they just couldn't, couldn't get stops and couldn't hit shots. And it made me sad, Ted. I watch the Olympics to watch the U.S. win. And we're supposed to win everything in basketball. And this team doesn't look very good right now. And it makes me sad. I make yeah. fun of Coach K a lot, but bring him back. <laughs> bring him back. He'll figure it out. Well, honestly, it's not just basketball the U S as a whole really isn't off to a great start. Now what we got a gold medal, first gold medal in swimming, which was a nice deal, but, um, you know, the, the women's team losing basketball, uh, off to a slow start. we got to get this thing ramped up. Let's go. Let's pick it up. Red, white, and blue guys. Just mm -hmm. figure it out. It's basketball, figure it out. Come on, Durant, figure it out. He's got to, right? Come on. They're it's so bad. They're going to get this thing figured out, right, and, and start playing to, better. Right? They haven't been together for very long, less than most of the other teams. Uh, hopefully, uh, Popovich can can figure it out a little bit and get Popovich them. Popovich getting all snippy with the reporters again after it's like. Well, see, I, I didn't see anything. I was I was guessing he probably would have been, it's, but it's how he always is. And I'm just like, hey man, win, win right. the game. Like, this isn't the NBA where it's like, no, you have the best players. Go win. Figure it out, coach. Right. That's right. Coach K figured it out. And we all just make fun of Coach K. Gosh. <laughs> okay, my loser of the weekend. I thought about going with Oklahoma State football because they announced Barry Sanders will have his name and jersey number added to the ring of honor at Boone Pickens Stadium. They're also, I think it's for the TCU game in November. He's also getting a statue. How in the hell was his name and number not in the ring of honor already? I mean, I get the statue not being built yet. Like, you know, statues, that's a, that's a big decision, right? Put a statue of someone somewhere, right. but he won the Heisman in 88. Shouldn't it just like automatically go into the ring of honor when you win the Heisman trophy? Yeah, they, I know after the stadium that, is different, but I'm just saying, like, what are we doing? They even Oklahoma announced State? the winner of the Heisman Trophy. It should have been in there. I can't remember. Uh, so um, last year, oh god, why am I drawing a blank? Running back the year before him went to oh play Thurman for, Thomas. Thurman Thomas went in last year, I think. Did they just the year, start the Ring of Honor? There was something. There was some reason why. It was those years. I don't. I don't remember exactly what it was, what the, what the timing was, but there. I remember whenever Thurman Thomas went in, there was a reason why, like he was just not going in, and then Barry was going to go in. I don't remember what it was, but I feel like there was something there. Okay, I'll take your word for it. But, but they still should have scrapped it yeah. and done it immediately. Yeah. What? Like the second <laughs> you decide we're doing a Ring of Honor, you probably put your only Heisman Trophy winner in there first. Right, I, I, right. I mean. I, I don't I'm sure know. someone will uh, remember the reason or tell us why it's it's just happening right Please now. Please tweet at us at Ted Layman 11 at Gabe Eichard. Tell us why we're idiots. 
<laughs> We're, uh, it happens a lot. Don't worry. But we love your feedback, people. But okay, so my my and I also thought about going with U.S. Golf because <laughs> Deshambo test positive, which I I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny, but just like his statement and everything, he's just such a goober, man. But <laughs> Deshambo he test positive, so he's out for the Olympics. Now I know Deshambo a polarizing guy, but he, he, do you see who he's getting replaced with? <laughs> <laughs> the only person in on the tour that's hated more than him. Exactly. Patrick Reed, <laughs> Patrick Reed takes his spot. And I guess, I think it was like Cantlay and Kepka were the next alternates. And I guess they both said, no, nah, we're good. They're probably on vacation somewhere anyways. And they're like, ah, no dude, we're too drunk to get on a flight right now. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but now I have to cheer because I've made it very clear. Teddy, no matter who it is, I'm cheering for him. It's the Olympics. I'm cheering for the red, white, and blue. So now I have to cheer for Patrick Reed. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm going on record. He is not my Captain America. I'm saying it now. That's ridiculous that, that he got that nickname. Absolutely not. But I will. And damn you, DeShambo, for making me have to cheer for Reed. It's ridiculous. You are not cheering for Patrick Reed. You are cheering for the United States golf representative. That's all you're doing. It's there's not even a, that's a, what I'll call him. If I tweet about it, you know, it's a great job by this United States golf representative. That's all you that's, 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 there's not a person there. Uh, no name, no likeness, no nothing. It's only the U S representative out there on the course. That's it. All right. But my loser of the weekend, USA gymnastics, women's gymnastics, mm. Teddy, you mentioned not off to a hot start. I mean, even Simone Biles, right? And I, I, I watched it tonight. They made all kinds of errors. Like, all of it, and they all took turns. It's kind of like an offensive line taking turns getting beat in a game. You just said, it's, it's just all going wrong. But it, was, it wasn't it was one that it was just, like, consistently terrible. They all had their errors. And I think I read it was the first time they didn't qualify first in a team competition it's the first time it's happened in 11 years wow i now they qualified yeah. second i'm not gonna make it sound like they right. like they're still in the finals and this one the final is just qualifying but what's and, the ramifications though does it change like the rotation or something or i i'm not gonna pretend to know enough about the yeah. sport i i won't even try i there's still i know that you know i was reading some of the quotes and, and saw some of the interviews about it kind of being maybe something that they needed for motivation, all that stuff. And that they were glad they got it out and qualifying as opposed, but like even Simone Biles, like she's landed and taking like three big steps. I'm like, what is happening? Like what's going, like what is happening to all of the U S Olympic teams in Tokyo? Mm -hmm. Like what, what are they putting in the water? I don't know. Um, hopefully they bounce back and I think they will. You, there's a lot of pressure on Simone Biles. I think it's kind of generated by herself, you know, with all the goat stuff, which let me just say, she is the goat. All right. There's, there's no she, doubt about she it. She also, she in qualifying, she finished number one for the all around. So yeah, she's, right. she's, she's in good shape. I, do you feel like there's, for whatever reason, whether it's basketball, whether it's gymnastics, whether it's um, soccer, there's just, we've created a, a whole lot of stuff outside the sport that's like just pressurized everything for them. Like, and it's kind of been a weird gear up to the Olympics. Like, is well, it even going to happen? And then here it is. Well, in, in her case, you, you think about it not only is she the face of USA gymnastics, like she's kind of the face of the Olympics mm -hmm. for America this go round. Right. I think that's yep. more than safe to say. Like I haven't seen any other Olympic athlete get more exposure leading up to this thing. Right. She's on all the commercials, everything she constantly talked about, and she's the best to ever do what she does. So that's the treatment she could get, but uh, there's, there's definitely pressure that comes with that. Right. Yep. And, I'm sure she's going to win everything, you know, when, when the 
the lights are brightest and uh, the finals roll around, but it's, well, it was interesting to see them struggle. Right. Struggle. They finished second, but struggle. No one is going to beat her. No. She can maybe beat herself if that makes sense. But like, if she hits her stuff, it's like, there's no, there's no one else out there that's anywhere close to the stuff that she does. So, yeah. And the way that, the way that that sport has changed where like you, your, your like start value, start value and all that yeah. stuff. Like I don't even, and once again, I'm not going to pretend I'm a gymnastics expert, but I don't even know how many other women that she's competing against can even attempt the stuff that she does. So, I mean, I think something like has to go pretty drastically wrong for her not to win she, it all around. She leaves herself a large margin for error. Great way of putting how it. Difficult. All of her stuff is, yeah, yeah. But come on, let's go, Team USA. All the you want sports. A quick prediction. Ooh, yeah, of, of course. I predict gold for the gymnastics team. I predict gold for the men's hoops team. Whoa. Coming off the loss to Evan Fournier in the French. Couldn't guard Come on, him. Dude. Uh, how often, and maybe it happens a lot, but how often are Dame Lillard and Kevin Durant going to be that bad, especially, you know, down the stretch? Dude, I, they could not hit anything. It was weird. Yeah. Figure it out. Hey, which, by the way, what is this three-on-three women's basketball thing? Oh, yeah, that's a new thing. Oh, one of the girls that uh, plays for the Dallas Wings is on the team, Alicia Gray. Oh, so nice. if you see Alicia Gray playing, cheer for her, Ted. Do me a solid. Yeah. I saw it just like briefly popped up and I was, I was like, what the, what is that? That's weird. I don't know that I can get behind that for an Olympic sport. Yeah. There's all kinds of weird sports. They're at skateboarding. Adding, but... I can't get behind skateboarding for as an Olympic sport either. I'm sorry. I just don't understand how it's scored. You know, like, I don't like if, if the guy flips the board with his feet and like lands back on it, I'm like, that's awesome. All right. Like, I, what is that worth? Know, is like, that like ratings, two points? Yeah. Ratings and stuff have a lot to do with it. And, you know, I understand, but, and it's not all about what everyone in the U S is into. I understand, but I don't know how like the, the wrestling is, is it out? It's always like on the verge of being out of the Olympics. And it's like one of like the original sports and they're putting in stuff like three-on-three three basketball and skateboarding come on man i watched i watched a lot of ping pong today those guys are is that and, not the, and again the the american guy was just getting smoked by some dude from sweden i was like figure it out bro unbelievable <sighs> let's go frustrating usa, USA. okay <laughs>